Hey, you're one of 12 listeners of the Real Life Podcast, brought to you by Rig Hand Distilleries. Oh my God. It's colder at Little Brick than it is in the Oilers' win column. Does that work? Is that a good joke? Works for me. Just in the office. The cafe is a cafe is fine. toasty warm place. The office is cold. There's a little auxiliary heater over there, Charles. You're a construction it's not guy. working. It's working fine. There's a lot of square footage it's got to fix. There's 31 different furnaces at Little Brick Chalmers, each older than the I last. I think Jared wants you hotter on the mic, Wanya. Hotter on the mic. Can I ask a question? What do, we think about, my- what do we think about the theme song for this thing? Well, I like it. Oh, I like it's it. classic. Is it too catchy to get rid of? Well, no. We've, ch- we've had three different songs. What were the other ones? Season one was uh, the Mud Howlers. My boys down in Mexico. Oh, yeah. They were hot shit. Mm-hmm. Season two, I can't remember. And then it went to Ghost Riding. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Ghost Riding off the bat, but like it's catchy now. And so remember when you said you were like, hey, just get on there and tell her, say, let's change it. This song fucking sucks. Do you want to change it? Well, I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's kind of caught on to me now. I'll change it. Is we just got to get we just got to get royalty free. Jared, am I talking properly? Bag milk, I need you to take a photo of me right now. I feel like I'm a father in confession, like yeah, trying to you. issue oh, wisdom to you yeah. and tell you you have to do 10 Hail Marys. <laughs> yeah. I we got new mics. You. We got I'll new mics. to you in a second. We hey. got new mics and we got Jared, the audio genius, and he's like, gentlemen, put your face against the screen. Yes. I feel ostracized. Ostracized? Yes. Yeah, you can't see anything, huh? Well, you know, special mics for episode 100. Come boy, no one can cancel you <laughs> if you own your own show. Up in the office. Oh, we hit how the long? century mark. You can't get canceled, Jalmers. If you own your own show, That's as right. long as you're willing to talk to mics that aren't plugged in, you're fine. How, how long have you guys owned those mics? Well, you want to get real technical about these mics? We've yeah. owned them for years and didn't know. <laughs> and Jared went upstairs and was going through one of the old closets of shit. Okay. And goes, hey, boys, you know how I said you needed new mics? Yeah, you already own them. <laughs> and I said, oh, do we, Jared? Well, isn't that very interesting? Aren't you the smartest man alive? And congratulations. They were so. just sitting in a box, too. They were just, it's not like it's they were anywhere. Unreal. They were just in a box. It's unreal. Chalmers. What else do you have up there that's fucking awesome? I don't know, man. You, we found I can't another see mic anyone for, with uh, this mic. <laughs> we found another mic think... that goes onto a camera upstairs. What? Oh, yeah. oh wow. We should use that. Zoom yeah, Zoom recorder. Do we have a camera, too? Uh, maybe. I think we so. all have cameras now. We do have a camera, but it doesn't have a lens for it. That we found. Uh, it doesn't have a lens. <laughs> Anyone out there with an extra <laughs> lens? Key. I'll trade you for a mic. You have to have your face that close to it. I don't know. It's a journey. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that's what I, I thought. Like this? I, I thought I had to put my mouth. See your What's facial this? hair coming through it. Uh, this, this much. That's one, one hand width. That's mm. two hands, isn't it? Did okay, you just ask if you had two hands between no, your face he and the was, mic? No, because he went like this oh, and I said see. one hand width. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's I'm dope. Like, so yeah. All right. Good start to the 100th episode, Good boys. Good start, boys. Some I'll inside tell you. Ban- exactly. Well, we're letting people in on the inside of the inside podcast. Inside of the for podcast. episode 100. It's the blooper reel. The blooper we're reel. We're just going to, you know, Jared's edited a, an episode for us about yeah. all the outtakes, and we're just going to start drinking. We should do 100 shots for our 100th birthday. Centurion. Oh, the Centurion Club? Let's do it. You remember that? You drink 100 shots of beer. What's 20 minutes? In 100 minutes. No, in oh, 100 every minutes. Yeah. yeah. It sounds so simple, At but like 40 you don't old. win. Yeah. Bag milk, you and your friends ever do the Centurion Club? Oh, you bet we did. Oh, Absolutely. Did you finish it? Any of you actually get through it? We got through it. And then I remember the only time I've ever done it, I got through it, 100 shot down, instantly puked. Instantly. The foam Seriously. is what kills you in the Centurion Club. Yeah. It's not the alcohol. No, I, I was just pour them right all. Out. Like... Let them sit so there's no foam. Are you just talking about Let the them foam? sit. Who's the got hell? that many shot glasses? ounces yeah. of beer. So it's at like oh, that's two true. and a half oh, liters. That's well, a you great just, point. No, no, no. I've done them like with one shot each. You just keep pouring, shooting, pouring, shooting. Mm. Yeah. You it's have difficult. to. Difficult. You have to want it. And you can have, you have to have pee breaks. If someone says to you, you bag can't. milk, I want to do a centurion's challenge with no toilet break. You say, no, sir, mister. Well, or you, you bang piss out a your pants like a champion. Just take yeah. a shot with you. It's, it's not, this is not hard to do. I say you call his bluff and you piss your pants. Remember when we used to go to Cowboys and they had that party where you spend 10 bucks or whatever it was for all you can drink, but you couldn't leave that drink till you piss. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you God. couldn't pee. And I remember like standing by the ropes to leave, just like trying to squeeze one last 25 cent draft in. Well, you couldn't be the guy to, to ruin it for everyone. You couldn't be like, I heard that people were like pissing their pants or like trying to like f- hide in a corner and pee. Like they can find you into like a really <laughs> open piss, room where there was nothing. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't, you don't want just, just like, just like in skiing, you don't want to be yeah. the guy that stops the chairlift. 
You don't want to be the guy that stops the drink till you piss True. so you can drink party. <laughs> I remember drinking till I peed, then pee- piss. I suppose everyone talked tough. And then going into the other half of Cowboys where the dance floor was. And there was like a ladies night at the same time. But they pulled the accordion door over so you couldn't see it. So when you got out of the pit, you, have, you peed and you had to leave. You're like, oh, my God, I've gone to hell. I'm on the other side of Cowboys right now, which has a whole bunch of male dancers and 400 <laughs> cougars yeah. Yeah. eyeing them up. And you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't pissed. And then you had to wait for like your next soft uh, bladder kidney. Friend? Yeah. Soft bladdered buddy to come over. Those are the days, boys. That was a good time. Should have been a good thing to be over there on ladies night. Even though there's rippers, you didn't have to go look at them. You could just hang Not out free with the booze. Ladies. Yeah, but they had all the... They, what do I need the girls for? Had all the women's attention. Yeah. What do I need girls for? There's free beer on the other side of this exactly. accordion door. <laughs> it wasn't good beer. No. Well, it never was. I remember oh. when they did the expose and it was like Cowboys caught for pouring old beers into next week's 25 draft. Remember that? Uh, I remember going to the bar with you next week, Jay. We're like, ah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we trade, trade, trade a draft, please. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't I, have I would money like to, to care. know. I would like to have, and well, I do and I don't. I would like to have 25 cent draft that, that exact beer now to see how shitty I would feel the next day. Cause like, in the age of when I wouldn't get hung over because I was so young, I'd still get a bit hung over from it. So like now the fact that I do get epic hangovers, I wonder what that shit would do. To You've me. gentrified since then. Now you're like, oh, I don't know. This year of port. Kind of hangover. Back in the day, it was just like bulk alcohol through your system. It was like gut rot. It was not like a headache type of thing. It was like full body shutdown. Gut rot. Oh, and it didn't help. I crushed two cheese donairs after. It's disgusting. Now look at you. You used to be street. Now you're drinking red wine. He's got a tea over You did there. a Donair review. Yeah. How was it? The review or the Donair? But I don't know. The both. Donair was fine. The review was mediocre at best, like everything else I do in life. <laughs> did you have fun? Had a great time. <laughs> Went bite for bite with Coom. Who could have a bigger bite of a Donair? Destroyed him. I could see you winning that. Wow. And then I slopped on the mic, which... <laughs> oh, whatever, which is good. Yeah. I thought it was it, was it wasn't a bad Donair. No, I thought it was a good review. Wasn't a bad. Donair. I got Jason wasn't Gord stanky, but like, wow. come on, that's yeah, that's Evan's Gord royal. Sorry, Caroline Devaney, you guys are really everybody. The who's who? Yeah, we've got a few in the can that uh, we can't divulge until well, until you see it. Because oh, why? Because the tease ru- you and keep the yeah. suspense the going. Rumors are it's going so on. it's so a list. Oh, I heard they got Bob Layton, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Hall. <laughs> My score is eighty five, and I am Bob Layton. <laughs> you should get Hall. Right. Oh, Halsey, maybe, yeah, maybe. Oh, the original Hall. What, 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 what I was, mm-hmm. what blew me away about Gord Stanky is that every week he goes to a different Donair place with his buddy, trying to find the best Donair in the in Edmonton. He's one of us. Just so the old way boys better. get it. No, yeah, smart. Who's your number one media guy in town? Don't say your own wife, Chalmers. Number She's one media guy, guy yeah, in like town. Personality, boy. And girl. Oh, just so everyone knows, Chalmers' wife is the Aaron Chalmers. Yeah. He yeah. changed his name to her name. <laughs> 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 Look, man, I just want to be somebody. Right? Uh, Your own wife, notwithstanding. You know who I really like? I like Ken Morrison. He's probably my favorite. He does the mornings uh, on, on the weekends. Yeah. But he also does. On the, Global. Yeah, he does the morning reporting a lot. He's, yeah, he's wicked. He's got a great personality. Bag milk, great favorite media too. guy. Uh, I'm going to go back to Bill Matheson for the old Idaho high. Oh, oh, no. oh wait, we talking about like I all guess, time? I guess, all time. I guess we're going I don't know. I, I, I honestly couldn't name more than just Aaron Chalmers. <laughs> You're a liar. You're on the radio five days a week. You are on a first name basis with half the media in town. They just think that you're a bag of milk. Yes. Did you? I linger in the corner. My the favorite top. local media guy, I, I fanboy on Gord Steinke. Yeah, I was fanboying on him because he's just been such a big piece of my life. But honestly, I'd have to be a homer and say Jason Greyer. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say, too. You guys are I legitimately, two votes for Greyer. I look up to that guy, man. I don't look I up to anybody. Do. I don't I like up to, I look up to him, too. I look up to cool. Jason Greyer. I do. Legitimately, I consider him to be somebody who sits me down and wags his finger in my face and tells me what I have to do. And I go, yes, sir. May I have another? And then I go off into the world. I and like Jason Greyer. And Greger. a super honorable mention to Dusty. Oh yeah, sure. Dusty's these the are all radio. Dusty's You're talking radio shit. guys, though, right? Like media oh, in general. Who's yeah, no, the only television general, people? But it's oh, not Linda Steele. Yeah, oh, Gordon right. Linda. Ooh, I'll still keep... like a Linda Steele tweet from Vancouver and feel good about myself. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love Linda. She Steele. was cool. Gene ever... Principe is a prince. Gene Principe. Well, he was a tomato yesterday. Yeah. What the hell was Jeez. going on with the camera lighting? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I think Gino's got some sun too. Yeah, he's been enjoying the California road trip. But no one tans that color. I think that was covering up a burn. Dude, when he goes to Florida and California, you can always tell when the road trip's over <laughs> yeah. because he straight up looks like yeah. 
orange. Gino is Italian. You he know, looks he's got good. the olive skin. He looks good with that salt and pepper hair and stash. Oh, he looks great. Just, just, he was just, <laughs> he does. And, and, I, and, I know. And I've seen him good. tan. Like the boys had him on the podcast a long time ago, and he came walking through Little Brick, and I'm like, that is a good looking tanned man. Like, mm. good tan. Gino. Must they hit the spray park or Does anybody or else you think for any other team that does his job, like, go to the level of puns at no all chance. time with no. him? Like, no, he chance. is one of a kind. What do you think other, like, when they're standing there and they're listening to him, do you think they're like, I think what the pros, is wrong I think the guys guy? who have their heads out of their asses, because I think most people are going to hate on him probably. But the reason why he's, cheesy? like, beloved with Oilers fans, yeah. the guys who get it or the gals who get it in the media look and go, so that's what you'd have to talk about if you did the Oilers broadcast yeah. in the last 11 years. Because he's having, like, he's, Gene Principe is happy, man. He's, he's trying going, to keep it light. Yeah, and I respect it. I respect that he comes out dressed like a hot dog when you know the season's been written off for yeah. two months. But he fully knows saying, like, Spooner fed and the fork in for the For sure. Oh, of course. A little what bit. else are you going to do? Come, not- come to work for the 11th straight year and be like, well... Here's another one they're going to I'm not saying I don't appreciate it. You can be it. like me. I'm just is. wondering if everybody, like if if people on the outside. I bet you they hate on him like crazy. Yeah. One thing I respect about Oilers Twitter and I respect about Oilers fans online is you see very little Principe shit. I think bag milk keeps a lot of it under. If you don't like Principe, then you're no friend of mine. Come on. <laughs> well, like, trying to put smiles good on her face. Like we're so emotionally invested in the team and literally my mood is so tied to the performance of that team that it's just gene just kind of breaks through the noise with some nonsense and it's kind of you know a little bit of separation from reality for a minute well exactly i interviewed him for the nation probably two three years ago now at this point he was telling the story of that it was so negative around here that he felt the need to yeah. kind of do something different and lighten it up and god bless him for it because it's just Positive a Prince tire yeah, fire. not like i gotta go back and say it. i'm not hating on gene I just want to know how it's perceived. Yeah, yeah. From no, no, like, no, no, no. I, sure. I would say the number one principe of life is be positive. Well, uh, said, thank you. Well done. Uh, <laughs> well done. I was talking to our boy Fugi the other day. We text during games now because he's like one of the hardest core Oilers fans that were on the verge of losing. So I have interventions with him when the Oilers get scored on. Mm-hmm. This I'm talking about the Oilers affecting your life. This was our exchange. Yeah, I got to him something like, do you think that he goes, you know, the, the Oilers losing all the time makes me so mad. And you know me, I never get mad. And I'm like, yeah, I do know you. You never, you make it rash, but you never get mad. And he goes, it's changed your life too. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, the reason you never knocked anyone up is because there's been no Oilers playoff runs. <laughs> like, you know what? Oh my God. You wow. actually could be right. Professor like, I have skated through life, no knockups. And it's probably because I haven't had shit to celebrate during my prime knocking up years. And we, we got to give Fugi some contests, our boy Fugi. Uh, is such a diehard Oilers fan that when he was 10 years old, he was skiing and he's a crazy motherfucker and uh, did some ski trick and had a spiral fractured his leg and at had to 10. Get, at 10 in Panorama and get flown to the Calgary hospital. He broke his femur. Broke his femur, yeah. And so he's in the hospital uh, recovering. Cause in traction. In traction. And the Flames decide to show up that day to visit the kids and the Flames come into his room and he yells at them, get out of here. I don't like you, Flames. <laughs> Ten years old. <laughs> yeah, he's like the little boy on Instagram that I saw that wouldn't shake. Tom Wilson's hand. Oh, oh, his hand. That's yeah. the best. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, actually thought of Fugi when, so I, when I, I saw that. Because that's exactly what he did. What a guy. Chalmers and I, but for the record, if we seem globally delayed, had the honor of playing men's league hockey at Sunday at 11.30 p.m. last night. Awful. Just awful. Terrible. And we try so hard to forfeit the game. Oh, but we have a team that's just like, you know... It costs money to forfeit the game too. Yeah, if you can believe pay. that, we have to pay 150 bucks as a team, and all we need is 10 skaters, and we get 10 yeses. And by like eight o'clock, everybody is Ugh. fucking regretting it. So we're all trying to like not say it, but not say it, right? Mm. So, but ended up we ended up. Playing. You don't want to be the guy that stops the chair. You don't want to be the guy that stops the chair. You don't want to be so, the guy that stops the chair. No. You don't want to be the guy that eats beets at midnight last night either. Oh, I checked in. Uh, I was worried about you. Uh, I was salty. I'm like, this is late and this is bitter tasting beets, I'm sure. But you were still having a good laugh. Well, I mean, at some point you just got to have a good laugh. The people in there are entertaining. You know what I mean? We're yeah. all in it together. So you ha- you do it after the game, no matter what. I never never delay? No, no. Always after the That's game. I respect Let's shit. run a road trip. It was a couple hour delay. Yeah, like on, when we were in Calgary. It was, the beats. Yeah, like those are about 3.30 a.m. beat cast That's just in Calgary. logistical. I mean, where are you going to well, exactly. stop on the side of the road? And- exactly. Middle of the sports bar? Yeah. <laughs> you signed a beat at the pint. I did, yes, for the chef. Yes, shout out to the chef who's got a signed beat next to his station. Raekwon, nice. the chef. Uh-huh. Yeah, he uh-huh. works at the pint. Raekwon? The chef. 
That's uh, his name? Of Wu-Tang of fame? Wu-Tang. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> the Cuban links. Chalmers, I'm talking shit. I get we got it. one minute till the break. I'm trying to puff the shit out, you know? I hear you. Yeah. We got real things we're going to talk about. Oh, yeah. We got, uh, we got off the rails to start. That's which, strange. You know, for episode 100, we have to keep it 100. If there's one thing that's consistent, we are inconsistent. I think we're very consistent. He's eating beets after every game. That's are true. we all going to do a segment where we keep it 100? We should keep it 100. <gasps> we'll be back after this real life podcast. <laughs> we have to talk about this idea. Have you got holes to dig, earth to pack, and roads to build? Then you need to call Jabba Machinery Group. Does your equipment need a service? Yeah, can't fix stupid, but here at Jabba Machinery Group, we can fix everything else. With a full range of parts to keep your equipment running smoothly, Jabba Machinery Group is a family operated and Alberta grown business. Here to help build a bigger and better Western Canada. Give us a call or visit us at jappamachinery.com. Jappa Machinery Group. Join the family. We're back. Real Life Podcast brought to you by our friends at Jappa. We had a lot of thinking and brainstorming and spitballing during the break. Chalmers invented a new segment (laughs) called Keeping It 100. And then we looked up what it means. It means you got to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth for people who don't know what Keeping It 100 means. And then we all challenge ourselves to write ourselves a keeping it 100 rant. And then Jared said we should do keeping it 100 all the time instead of best and worst because you guys never do best and worst because you're idiots. And I said that's not keeping it 100. Then we all had a laugh. And now we're going to give it a shot unless it sucks. and We'll never do it again. (laughs) Oh, we're just going to do it. Let's just try Chalmers. Keep okay. it 100 with me. Tell me what your scathing take is that you've got. <laughs> I knew you were going to do me. Well, I'm oh, starting oh, with you. Son of a bitch. Okay. Son of a bitch. So, so start with, if I'm keeping it 100, I got to say. If I'm keeping it 100, I've got to say that <laughs> the yellow Red Bull is the finest drink ever invented. Oh. And that it does not make me any more awake, even if I have two in one day. If anything, it probably dehydrates me. <laughs> but... <laughs> I love them to death, and it's like a placebo effect, and I could drink them all day long. So you're a funny guy because you'll brag about never smashing coffees. Yes. Yeah. And you're like, oh, coffee. I don't drink coffee, guys. That's horrible for you. Okay, and- so I'm going to keep it even more 100. Yeah. The earliest I've ever had one is around 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> uh, on that day, I had my second one at 10. <laughs> I think I had my third one at around one. I had my oh, cardiac well, event at and two. And then I went to the hospital around yeah. five. <laughs> well, if, if I'm going to keep it 100... I have to tell you that I'm concerned for, for your health and well-being. Well, I appreciate your concern, and I hope that Aaron doesn't listen to this one because Nobody she's listens. going to Nobody kill me. She actually asked me to stop drinking them. And she, really? Yeah, she like bought me G2s and like all these different types of drinks so I could have them <laughs> instead, and I just go straight for them. With all the knucklehead shit you do, your lovely wife draws a line at you drinking less Red Bulls. Yes. That's and where she tells you. If I'm really keeping it 100, sometimes I don't take him into the house so she doesn't see them. And I keep him in a little <laughs> tiny, uh, what's a cooler bag with ice in it? Sure. Uh, outside. Yeah. And if I'm even keeping it more 100, yeah. I actually, when I finish a can, if I'm at home <laughs> and I, I, I hide it underneath all the other bottles and cans. So when she opens up the thing, she doesn't see it. You're like an old school alcoholic, but with Red Bulls. With Red Bulls. It's fucked. I know. They're good though. That was funny. They taste like Koala Springs, like from back oh, wow. in the day. Koala, Koala Springs. Yeah, you remember Koala Springs? That took Spring? me back. So Blast they had the two the flavors. One was like pineapple and mango. Pineapple mango. Sure. They had more and than the other, two. Oh, uh, the two popular ones. Koala Springs. They just went back in time. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe it's, it's something back in my, my childhood. My grandma used to buy me Koala Springs all the time. And you don't like your current plum Red Bull? I mean, the plum one's fine. It's going to do the trick. Wow. But Wow. Red Bull drops them off like they're dropping off gold bars. Like, hey, we've got these new plum Red Bulls and we're a sponsor of the Nation Network. And I was like, I don't know. Give them to Chalmers. He yeah, drinks more you know Red Bull than anybody. The plum, the plum it one is good. It's the, sorry. It's like the third one I've had. Not today, <laughs> this week. And uh, yeah, so I'm keeping it 100 on Red Bulls. I really like them and it really sucks. That was a good rant. All right. Jay, you want to keep anything 100? Hockey life. Yeah, love. well, I think I gotta keep it one hundred with 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 hockey, and um, it's not as easy as it looks. No, 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 no. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm. Trust me. There's, there's a method to my madness with the dramatic pauses and whatnot. It's to add effect. If I am gonna be completely <laughs> keeping it one hundred, <laughs> let you into the inner sanctum of what I'm thinking about. Um, I'm at the end of the day. If I'm gonna keep it one hundred. I'm a fan of this team to a fault. You know, 
You guys will ask me at a serious opinion, and I will always give you the Gene Principe positive answer of everything is fine. Oh, we did a change. I like the change. Oh, we traded for this guy. That was the answer. But fuck me. There is some shit we got to fix. And if I'm going to keep it 100, I am losing it internally, and I am going in and out of stress whenever I think about this team lately. And I love what Hitch is saying, and because I'm the diehard fan and not the independent media guy with who can be bi- or unbiased, um, I'm drinking all the Kool-Aid that Hitch is saying, and I really want to fucking believe it's going to happen. But then last night happened, and I'm like, it's not happening. Like, So if I'm going to keep it 100, I am extremely stressed out about this Edmonton Oilers hockey club. Fire someone. Who do you fire? Right well, who's now? left, bros? We well, got to fire. Well, Shirley's like, got to go. Yeah, Shirley's got to go. It's just a matter of when, not if. What player shouldn't be on the team? Keep it 100. Well, hmm. Here's the thing. We don't have anyone to replace Fire a with. trainer, if, man. If, Which if, trainer is going to keep If we're going to keep it 100. <laughs> Trent Yachty, you're fucked. Yeah. Which was, one of those people shoveling the ice in a TV timeout needs to fucking go? I'm okay? firing the usher okay. in section 121 if I'm keeping it 100. That was the one I was going to say. You got to make cuts. She's fucking terrible. <laughs> I don't if, even know if it's if, if we're keeping 100, I know a guy who knows a scout. There's some layers here. Ooh. And this scout was at the game last night and watched, uh, I think the scout was in California for the last week scouting a bunch of games. So saw a, bunch, a lot of the other games. And texts <laughs> our friend and says, it's bad. Uh-oh. How bad? Well, that's, that's, that, that statement alone is enough. That's how bad. <laughs> like, the fact that it's just, that's, there's no context added to it, it's bad. Now, that's an unbiased opinion where I'm extremely biased. So I'm like, it's not that bad. You're just not seeing our true potential. And that's what I always default and think to. But I'm fucking thinking it might be bad if I'm keeping it 100. And I want to always keep it positive. And it's not about always being positive if you're being 100. Bag milk? All done. Very well done, Jay. Very good rant. If I'm keeping it 100, I thought about this last night. If I'm keeping it 100, I've decided I'm no longer ever, until changes are made, going to wear any item of Oilers clothing. These motherfuckers do not... Holy flying shit. These motherfuckers do not get the privilege of having me walk around amongst the fine citizens of Edmonton advertising their shitty product. Holy mackerel. I will always support the team because they're my team but I will not give this management group or ownership one lick of free advertising on this beautiful torso. Adonis. That I'm walking around the city with. Will you still wear nation gear? Of course. Okay, good. Of course. Nation gear always, but I will not ever, until changes are made, wear any lick of Oilers clothing. And I'm just keeping it 100. Respect. That's That's, it? That's fire bag milk. That's it. Good shit. I think right. I'll do that too. We've got to draw the line, man. I, I don't think I have one jersey. I don't wear. You are right to do so. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 no. I see what's happening right in front of my very eyes. I still believe. But People are going to tweet I and say they're believe. doing this. Oh, no. Like I said, I, like I'm going to the game on the 9th against Calgary. I'll, I'm happy to go. I'm happy to support the boys. I want to watch Connor every single minute that I get to. But they're not getting any of my free advertising, nor am I paying them for their goods. Regularly, hey, you regularly, know were you a jersey wear? It doesn't matter if there's a thousand of you that share that. They don't fucking care. No, but it has to start with someone. Oh, no, oh and it's and, me. And bag milk. You're oh, doing you're the right not just thing. someone. You're you. And yes, to answer your question, Chalmers, I religiously wear my nude jersey when I go to games. No, oh, very nice. So this is something. Oh, yeah. Bag milk? Yeah, poor Nuge. Poor yeah, Nuge I mean. is a victim to this. Nuge doesn't deserve this. No, it doesn't. Exactly. But unfortunately, he's in the mix. And that's because his bosses are incompetent. So they no longer get any bag milk love. <laughs> Not on the streets. <laughs> Damn. That's <I> 100. <laughs> fucking keep it at 100, boys. Thought about it last night. As the game was wrapping up and the game is winding down, for some reason, they pulled the goalie again for a, th- a second empty netter last night. I'm pissed right yeah, off. We were sitting in the locker room. It's 3-2. 
and our buddy goes, yeah, we just lost the game 5-2. We, there was like a, two minutes left when we got in the dressing room. It, it was that minute when the fifth goal went in. Oh, good for like, them. This is enough. I'm just trying to keep it 100. That's all, Wanya. Yeah. Hope that new mic picked that up. That was a whistle of excitement and disbelief. <laughs> like, what, what else are you supposed to do? You got to hit him somewhere. I'm but one man, but this is my plan. So, Wanya? Yeah. Well, if I'm keeping it 100 with a little emoji line underneath it on our 100th podcast, mm-hmm. I think that when you have a regime change, whether it's political or in sport or your parents are fighting and they're about to lose control of the kids in the house, they're going to start eating cotton candy for dinner, whatever, whatever regime you're looking at, it always follows the same phases. And I think we're in the final swan song of the boys on the bus management of this team. Because I think what's going to happen is this. Connor, who can defeat the boys in the bus? How many Hockey Hall of Fame people are there? Six now? Five cups? A thousand years of arrogant incompetence? Four million missed trades? Two thousand bad draft picks? A variety of bad practices and things like that? They've let seep into the entire organization. Mm -hmm. The only person who can defeat these dipshits is Connor McDavid, age 21. And once that guy starts calling shots around the organization, which he isn't doing yet, you can watch year on year. He's becoming more of a leader. We had Brandon Davidson on the show. He said he went to Montreal. When he came back, Connor matured by a factor of three. They're going to get a new GM. They're going to get a new coach. And I bet you the most active person yaying and neighing these decisions are going to be Connor. When great players come to an organization, they take over, man. They take over all aspects. They take over coaching. The GM's like, I'm making this move. They're like, shut your mouth. No, you're not. I want you to go get this guy. Look at LeBron. Every time he goes to a new team, the coach is like, what should we do, Mr. James? And he's like, here's what we're going to do. And I think Connor's going to be like that. And I think that we're setting up for Connor versus the boys in the bus in a final battle. And I think at the end of this summer, you're going to see it's a completely different organization. I think at the time is now. I hope they clean house up top and they do do that because... We need to keep this kid engaged. And that's why Cates, who is paying attention because he just fired the coach when he flew into town, is going to sit down with Connor one-on-one. I bet you anything. Because he's got an arena district to build. He's got a massive... The Oilers sent out this week bag mail. Tell me what you're telling me about the email you got. They sent out an email to people on the ticket list, whether you're a season ticket holder, whether you're waiting on the line for season tickets, or whether you're just getting mini packs or whatever, that tickets are 40% off. I cannot think in my natural life back to the Oilers of the mid nineties when like Bob Beers was a player. The Oilers ever offering 40% off on a ticket. No, never. They never had to. Never. 20 years. They haven't had to do that shit. There's cracks in the foundation boys, but I think Connor can fix it. And I think he's going to take the next level of running shit this summer. I can't see them making any moves without asking him. And I think a guy like that's brain is working on a different level than all of our brains. And some of what he has to do on the ice, I think he's doing everything can be asked of himself. And now he's like thinking about the organization and like who's good and who's bad and shit like that. I don't think Connor wants to play for a team that's lazy for practices. What if a star player doesn't know the best thing? Like what if it's Connor, man, that's the thing about it. I wouldn't Well, Taylor Hall and Jordan Everly and those guys didn't know what to do. God bless him if we're looking to the Nuge. He wouldn't know what to do. But Connor used to go into his brother's minor hockey league dressing room rants from the coach and stand there wearing a shirt and tie even though he wasn't playing and would listen to the message and would go sit in the stands and watch the game as though he was a member of the team. Right. This kid has soaked up the game to 100 level. Ooh. But if well he's, done. as a counterpoint, if he's that involved with the game, can he not look around and be like, this place is fucked? But that's not how his brain works. He thinks it's his problem to fix. The difference between an elite athlete and an all-time champion athlete is the difference between, like, take your pick. Who were you talking about earlier? Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers. And Brett Favre? Yeah. What's the difference? Cock shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Championships. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and they've wasted Aaron Rodgers lately. Yeah. For the last five years. For sure. Yeah. But I think Aaron Rodgers is like a Taylor Hall. Mm-hmm. And I oh, think- he doesn't want to go anywhere. Oh, he doesn't? Aaron Rodgers, I don't think he wants to go anywhere. I mean, Green Bay's been where he's been since the very beginning. People go, oh, shit. If we no, don't they start, want to fire the coach. But if they're like, if, but do people freak out about Aaron Rodgers wanting to leave Green Bay? Never. No. See, then why do we freak out about Conor McDavid wanting to leave here? Just because we've seen that movie play out before, I think. Yeah. 
It's still the, it's still this the, is the kid who wants to win, and if we're yes. denying that, well, then it's got to be fixed. You're getting the league maximum for the next eight years. Oh, yeah. Who's well, the best GM, Connor? But seriously, if you went to Connor McDavid right now off the record and said, what should we do? I bet you he started to formulate a plan. Yeah. I'd See, at the very beginning, they knew that this could happen. Is that not why Gretzky, like, you think Gretzky was like, hey, guys, could I come work for the Oilers? Like, they they put him on staff. They kind of said, like, you be a part of this. So that Connor would be like, okay, you know what? Like, they're trying to surround me. Like That hasn't worked. No, I fixes. think Gretzky's around to sell condos to be honest. That hasn't worked. I think Gretzky, yeah, he's a head of state. I don't think he's going in the room. I think Gretzky, if anybody, will be the only one that survives the purge yeah. if it does oh, indeed happen. Yeah, like, I, and I know Gretzky cares, but I don't think he's involved with anything. He's like the executive of the corporation, right? Mm. He's out there like the charity events and like, hi, everyone. Plaza open. Oh. So just for everyone keeping score on our Keeping It 100 sex yeah. uh, series, you three did an Oilers take and I did a Red Bull take. Chalmers, you, we've lost you. That's one of the reasons why you had to come on the show. I guess we got to so. bring you back into the fold. Let's come back after this real life podcast. Jared, I see you. SumoJerky.com. You've been through the gas station. You've seen all the flavors, teriyaki, black pepper, maybe extra hot, sweet chili. That's about as exotic as it gets. But if you subscribe to Sumo Jerky at SumoJerky.com, check them out online, enter your preferences. They source out the finest small batch handcrafted ma and pa jerky from all over the world. They have all your favorite flavors, but it's high quality handcrafted versions of your favorite flavors, and they get exotic as well. Exotic jerky from exotic animals, or play it straight and stick with beef. Enter your preferences at Sumo jerky.com it shows up once a month deliver it as a gift if you like have it sent to your work for a little pick me up during the day sumo jerky.com follow them on instagram at sumo jerky for pictures of their meat or sign up for the service yourself sumo jerky.com once a month meat delivered right to your door it's the home delivery service you didn't realize you need until it started showing up my favorite day of the month is sumo jerky delivery day sumo jerky.com to get started we're back real life podcast just tried out a new thing called Keeping It 100. Worked out great. Advertisers are already <laughs> texting <laughs> us. Are you keeping it 100? By, like, were you keeping it 100 when you yeah. said it worked out great? Worked out great. 100? 100. Worked what? out 100. Can you say that? The advertisers are texting in saying, we love the new segment, Keep It 100. Sumo Jerky just texted Chalmers. I know. It was me texting myself. Tell- <laughs> I really like that on the podcast. You boys are doing a fine job. Hey, look what this guy said. Nice little organic segment we had there. Yeah. <laughs> Got to make your own content up. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at the 1-1-1 one, one, and one Hitchcock regime. On this, the 100th episode of the Real Life Podcast. We're three games in. Bag milk, thoughts? Started off good. Oh, amazing. Saturday, or uh, I guess I've been Tuesday. I actually started off terribly in the sense of the first period, but then... Yes. Well, you see, I would have loved to know what Hitchcock was thinking when the Oilers allowed a goal 46 seconds into his first <laughs> period as the head coach. Like if we, because Sportsnet, whoever was producing that night did a great, a great, great thing. As soon as the Sharks went down and scored, instant cut to Hitchcock's face. And I appreciate that because I want to get inside that dome of his, try to get a little idea, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell us, Wanye. Oh no, he's a pro. He keeps that shit locked down deep inside. Jay says he so, knows when the camera's on him. Yeah, the, uh, Hitchcock is a veteran and he knows when the camera's going to be on him. So he goes like stone face, you know, not giving you anything, but when the, it, the play is on and the camera's nowhere near him, he's going crazy. He's got a very expressive face. Oh, one of my favorite things going on right now is Oilers Twitter. Everybody changing their avies to uh, Hitchcock avies. Great. It's the best. There's so many good Hitchcock reactions out there. Yeah. Fantastic. The photos of him at the outdoor classic with the fedora and the shades on oh. like this is classic awesome. hitchcock yeah it's a boss style game good i liked it with i the, like hitch with i the, like uh you know that bowler hat kind of combo big aviators i like Ooh. when he's talking to the media i like how he talks i i, I love how he talks i uh, sell everything that comes out of or i'm buying everything oh, that comes everything out of i just really hope it fucking happens like the the hit that five minute rant about why you want to pull the RV to be called up i'm like i'm like this is amazing okay mm-hmm. i just so hope for- this actually has an effect on the performance of the team. For somebody like me, who doesn't take the time to watch a Ken Hitchcock press conference, what did what he do say you about What do you got to do that's so important? Oh, what fuck. are you doing? Anything Drinking else? Red Bulls? <clears throat> yeah. All anything, of them. Pretty much anything else. What did he say about Red Bull? Yeah, hi Red Bulls. Yeah, hi Red Bull. What did he say? Why did he want him up? He said he wanted responsibility for his development. Yeah. He feels he can help him. 
He says, I, this is a, to paraphrase, he's like, this is a very important prospect to the organization. I want responsibility for how he's developed. And then he goes on. He's like, yeah, he could be playing in the AHL, blah, blah, blah. I want him here. Hmm. So then he went up and he waved his keys at Shirelli and Shirelli's like very excited. <laughs> somebody's <laughs> waving his keys in his face. And then he recalled him. Yeah. First of all, congratulate him on the amazing signing that was the Lucic signing and then ask for the <laughs> Yes, he's like, wow, you got you gave 42 million bucks to a guy who's good for one goal a season. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> you did it again, Chia. I also gave him term. <laughs> <laughs> and a no move clause. His contract is bulletproof. Enjoy. I was playing around with the uh, with the NHL numbers the other day and if they decided to buy Lucic out for some reason his cap hit spikes for two of the next like 10 years or whatever. So they would literally save zero money. Zero. So he's here. He's here until death. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good. We just need to convince him maybe to go off to the uh, Ferenc Peninsula there where he's hurt. Quote unquote. Oh, that's the only way out. Yeah. Or this identity line. (laughs) Clicks. (laughs) Which I'm buying into. Always. But they did look good last. Like they they are creating some energy and some opportunity. Now they just need to bury. Well, it's super interesting too to see how Hitchcock handles his players. McDavid, Drysaddle, Nuge getting more minutes than any of the forwards by far, by three, four, five minutes in some cases. It's it's quite evident that Hitch loves Tyratty. Yes, <laughs> yes. Tyratty played a whopping three twelve last night. Yeah, I I believe Hitch does not think he's the answer. I would have loved to see Tyratty's face into his mind, into his text messages the minute Hitchcock was announced as coach. Because I pulled up some stats, Wanye. In the four years that Tyratty played under Ken Hitchcock in St. Louis. I forgot about that because I don't know players who aren't on the Oilers. From 2013 to 2017, Tyratty was trying to crack the Ken Hitchcock-led St. Louis Blues. Chalmers, do you know how many games he got in over those four years? Uh, I'm going to guess not many. 30. Uh oh! Average ice time around six seven minutes a night. Yeah, so that's a shitty four years. Uh, so Hitch don't like Ratty. <laughs> Ty Ratty is not the answer. Uh oh! So literally the only person that didn't like the Ken Hitchcock hiring was Ty Ratty, and and apparently Chris Russell too because this is the third time he's had uh, Russell. And they did that interview with Kyle Brodziak, just be like, "Oh, you played for Hitchcock in St. Louis. What's it like?" And he looked like he saw a ghost. The guy yeah. was coming into Edmonton. Probably the last couple years of his career, wanted to have an easy time. Cush practices, AJ. Hey, yeah. Cush yeah. practice. Everybody's having a good time. McClellan, ah, oh, you're easy, bud. Fucking Hitchcock comes in, ruining his parade, <laughs> shit. yelling at him and shit. Maybe what it does do? something to these boys. So they, they go into Anaheim. Yeah, I loved at Fake Oilers GM's tweet as Chirelli. That congratulating everyone on the shutout and then noting he'd left the game with 20 seconds left, <laughs> but he's sure it's fine. <laughs> Good shutout tonight, boys. Left the game 20 minutes or 20 seconds early. But I'm sure we're fine. That guy, that account is in his prime when something happens, like a new coach or a new whatever. That's that account's wheelhouse. He is the funniest Oilers Twitter thing of all. Time. You brought up one last night, though. Sean Horkoff. Uh, R.I.P. Horkoff. to uh, Comrade Horkoff. I forgot all about that guy. Me entirely. too. Actually, I hadn't thought about it until you tagged me last night. But man, what a great account that was. So for those who don't remember, because they don't know or don't care, Chalmers, I'll include you in the second half. Yeah, I saw it. I liked it. There was a hilarious account on Twitter that pretended to be drunk Sean Horkoff, who was a Russian like <laughs> farmer. <laughs> okay. And he'd been like in the war and like was just talking about how he lived in the middle of nowhere. And he was like a happy Russian named S. Horkov, drinking vodka and telling everybody off. And everybody was comrade. Everyone was a comrade and he was hilarious. And then the he just disappeared. Like he went away one off season, didn't come and was back. Was this thing like he only did it when Sean Horkoff was no nope. scoring? He would well, attack people oh, and just make fun of shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so then someone says to me, and I don't even remember this, Jay, that <laughs> Oilers Nation did an expose or like was talking about the account. And then everybody freaked out. And then Wilson took it down. And he was like, Remember when you cowards took the article down about S. Horkoff? And I was like, I have no recollection of this whatsoever. Yeah, I was good because well, I saw that last night too, and I was I tagged like, you. I thought maybe you'd remember. There's no way either of us would pull would have pulled that from the website. No, but he said Kent did, but I don't yeah. remember Kent having latitude over Oilers Nation. But he would have access to the back end still, so who knows? And I could also see Kent being like, people are freaking out. He'd be like, "Oh, this has got to come down. This has got to come down." 
Where he's like, you and I like to watch the world burn. Yeah, like the chaos. Embrace the chaos. <laughs> it's like uh, Tom Drance when he has panties in a knot when you posted the General Fanager article and we explained why oh, yeah. the transaction didn't go through. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you still have a chance to take this down. I'm like, what is wrong with it? I was professional the whole way through oh. and I got literally dozens of people saying, why are you a liar, Wanye? And yeah. I said, why did Sean Horkoff not get named, or uh, Sam Gagne not get named the 10th captain in all his history? Uh. <laughs> There's still time. There's still time. It could still surprise you. Yep. Let's take this now in a roundabout way till last night's game against the Kings. There's a few things I'd like to point out if I'm keeping it 100. Go ahead. Number one, the fact the first shot of the goal game didn't go in last night was insane. Amen. Here, here. Oh, you know what? I actually felt bad for Talbot last night in the sense that if it wasn't for him, that game would have been, they would have been down two, three goals within 10 minutes. You think? He looked good in the first five minutes before I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I had an 1130 hockey game. I know game. you Fuck, earned I your sleep. treat. You earned your treat. No yeah. one's making fun of you. Yeah. There's a lot of high quality scoring chances, but uh, but that, the, that the, first goal is almost safe. Yeah, yeah. I he looked. He looked. Is, he looked. The first like five minutes of that game, he looked a little scary. I think the point is though that he got outdueled again by his counterpart, despite the fact that he didn't play poorly necessarily. Cal Peterson. Yeah. That, who the guy? fuck is he? Exactly. He looks young. Yeah. Vesna. This caliber. was the guy who played for uh, Notre Dame and started like 91 straight games or something. Did he? Yeah. You know more about Cal Peterson than I do. <laughs> Gene told me last night. If we're thinking of the same guy. Well, so that blew my mind. I would much rather be an Oilers fan than a Kings fan. Somebody tweeted about how they have like $57 million tied up in salary for the next like while for players over 32. Yeah. And it yeah. goes up into like 35, 35, like Their 36. lineup on paper doesn't. It's, it's nice lineup like Kovalchuk. But look at Kovalchuk. Look at the reality. Kovalchuk sitting on the end of the bench last night. Yeah, he played. Six. He leads a team in and points. He's playing, yeah, mm-hmm. he's yeah. yeah. Ty Ratty right now. He played Coach six Hayes. minutes last night. Hmm. Couple Chuck did. That's six minutes. Yeah, yeah. Their leading score played six minutes last yeah. night. Yeah, Coach hates him. Yeah, new coach hates him. Yeah. No wonder they're <laughs> the last yeah. place team in the league. Yeah. Because the problem is they dummied the Oilers, and they're the last place team well, in the yeah. league. Like if the Oilers win that game. Then that was a very successful California road trip. Very good. Very trip. successful. And now it's a failure. Yeah. Because it started off great with a big win over San Jose. Yeah. And then, okay, the wheels fell off against Anaheim. Still got a point. Still got to win that game, though. 100% you have to win it, but they still got a point. It's knowing, okay, let's move on. Sunday night should be a gimme game against the worst team in the league. And Who then played they, the night before. And lost against Vancouver the night before. And yep. then they come out and dummy a rested Oilers team. Shocking. Shocking. So what do you guys think about the next three? So until, until we do the next podcast, I like to look forward. So they got Dallas tomorrow. Dallas tomorrow. The Kings again on Thursday. And Golden Knights here on Saturday. They have Meaning, to win all three. Yeah. All home games. They have to win all three. Well, then I look at them I'm like, yeah, yeah, those are all three easy wins. But once again, I'm, I'm starting to realize <laughs> that I'm just going to be pro- perpetually a delusional Oilers fan. We've and come this stars long. and blues. That's that's four winnable games in the next five. They have to get them. They have to. Oh yeah, they have to now. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want the fucking same thing that happened last year happen this year where they play during the Christmas it. holiday season they were kicking ass and right knocking on the door for a playoff spot and then went into January and just laid an egg. And then I went on like a six week hiatus Ender. of going to any games. That was awful. Which is a shame because I paid f- to go to each of those games and re- and, assist- and and decided not to. Go. I still went Chalmers with his yeah. seat. It was okay for me, but it was not as fun. It's kind of <laughs> counterintuitive. <laughs> like, oh, I guess I'm having fun tonight. Yeah. You got bag milk not wearing others merchandise. Mm-hmm. You got Jay remembering last year's six week sanctions against the team. It's tough times, Chalmers. It is. I've been offered tickets four times in the last month, and I've declined every time. What? Just Where don't... lower bowl? Yeah. I just don't fucking want to go. I just don't want to go. Yeah. Because they're late. Like, I would like to take my kids. But yeah. It's normally school nights mm-hmm. late. And I don't know. You know, the whole rigmarole of parking and shit. Not particularly. Oh, geez. Old man yells at cloud. Yeah. Listen. I know. It's just not a huge priority for me to go to games right now. Like, We're going to bring you back into the fold, Chalmers. That's why they're offering 40% off tickets. Because guys like me don't want to go. And that's still not enough to lure you in. Well, well, in the Super and literally, like they have the most beers, explosive maybe. player in the NHL. And I would love to just go watch him play, but I still, it's not doing it for me right, right now. 
Well, and the interesting thing too is like the media, like national media, like the Freedmans, the McKenzies, that ilk, they're now talking a lot more about how all these box sponsors are coming up in Edmonton at the end of the year. And if they can't get regular people to go, there's got to be concern that some of these See, big I thought companies. That they were five year deals. I, I heard the most no, of the boxes I think are it was five. three. I thought it was three. Mm, my boy Kerry. He's a three year commitment. But he said all the boxes are five. Uh, he told me. I'd believe him. But he said there's an early buyout clause that's coming up. Oh, well, maybe that's what that so is. So people can pay money to parachute and not have to go. <laughs> oh, God. What that's this? what they're looking at is companies to literally pay the money to not go to their hockey games. And then Nicholson will walk around and go, oh, whatever. Oh, sold. Boy, hey, check these out. It's the new Nicholson Nuggies. Uh, hey there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholson Nuggets. They're, uh, that comes with plum sauce. I squoze myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. Real Life Podcast back after this. Hopefully shit gets better. Alberta is where you find hardworking hands. Where prairie-grown rye meets mountain spring water. Where we pull dragons from the ground. And we choose Rig Hand Distillery. Vodka, whiskey, gin, and more. Rig Hand is made from Alberta-grown ingredients, locally distilled and distributed. It's a bottle of Alberta. Ask for award-winning Rig Hand in your liquor store and visit RigHandDistillery.com. We're back. Real Life Podcast brought to you by our good friends at where? Rig Hand Distilleries. Do you know that I had my bottle of Brum last night set? I went and got some some fucking mixers. Mm Mm-mm. I was going to do a celebratory cocktail when the Oilers beat the Kings. Mm. Didn't happen, Wanye. Oh, the Didn't Oilers happen. are denying you of delicious rig hand brum. That's would what you saying. ever do a drop shot of a beat in a brum? And down Ooh. Oh, that, would just, that just sounds revolting. That's yeah. a Christmas party idea. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas nation party is going to get weird. Er. <laughs> yeah, weirder. <laughs> we have the shot roulette again upstairs. Drinko is still here. Drinko will never die. No. We may. <laughs> yeah, it'll outlive us all. All we need is a new GM, a new coach, maybe. Is that I it? But they don't like to hitch. We Four need a new goalie. We need oh. to rebuild our bottom six. <laughs> and we need two defensemen. And maybe a couple of top six forwards. Nope. I think we got enough if we get rid of our bottom six and squoze a couple up. Yeah, why not? We'll be all right. Connor, Leon, Nuge, they just play for 60 minutes. Yeah. It'll work. It's fine. I don't see the problem. We're so close. Is Nuge not on... McDavid's line anymore because did you say that Hitchcock said that he could hold his own line? Yeah. And that's why he should do it. Yeah. yeah. How's things gone since then? Good. Nuge him. has four points in his last four games. Yeah. No, Nuge is fine. Problem is, he has no wingers. Problem is, the is, answer with him. Yeah. The answer is there. Oh, well, that guy, 10 G notes. Six. Who, Jason? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 650K his PTO contract was. He stepped in and replaced Maroon. Yeah. Yeah. Effectively. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a glue guy right there. That's a it's guy you need. Very shockingly French in the interviews. I, I always forget. He, I don't know and then if he I is a glue guy, but he's a guy who's going to get some scores. Yeah, true. Yeah. A glue guy's like a glue guy's Hendrix. a good room guy. We don't yeah. know that for sure yeah. yet. We don't know that he isn't. He's the type of guy that if when, when he's playing better, it makes everybody go, oh my God, I got to play better. He's like Look a nice this guy. He's not expected to play this well and he's playing this he's well. He's what Eric Belanger should have been. He's like a really nice side. Believing in the third Yeah, year. like a very nice side. Do you know what I mean? Like Connor's the nice steak. No. Nope. Got Chase on. He's a little garlic mash. Right oh, off the side. Yeah. Yeah. Garlic Everybody's mash. having a good time with garlic mash. Yeah. That's Chase on. I get it. You need him. <laughs> well, ten goals, clearly. See? Yeah. This garlic mash so better have something better you... than just straight up mashed potatoes. Here's the thing on Chase on. This might be something funny to do. Um, so he's shooting at like forty two percent or something crazy right now, or high thirties. So he's got ten goals now and we're twenty some odd games in. How many goals do we think Chase on? is going to finish the season with 23. I'm going to go 23 because this pace has to fall off, but he's still going to pop another 13. Are we ever going to come back and look at this? Or is this just going to be like, I could take a record. Sure. I'll say <laughs> <laughs> he's writing it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> oh, I'll uh, note that in the log. Uh, What's his career high? Dude, did you say, anyway, does anybody know? I know yeah. we could pull it up. It's yeah. Give me a second. Right off the, tell me. right off the hop, but uh, just looking here, Alex chase on. I'm going to say his high. career high is 15. His career high with the Dallas Stars in 2013-14 was 13 goals. Oh, mm. well, he's going to crush that by at least one. <laughs> so I got 23. Step up, gentlemen. 15. <laughs> wow. Wow. He's going to wow. go sell a van off, eh? Wow. Oh, son in love. Yeah. Remember that? And I hope I'm wrong. Put the asterisk. Hope he's wrong. Got it. But 
Chalmers, he didn't put an asterisk. I know, I saw. He, <laughs> he just put about putting an asterisk. <laughs> he didn't have enough he did room. Like a, like a fake twirl on the paper, like <laughs> one. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, because oh, you're I've already dreaming. admitted who I am. You're dreaming. He's gonna go 28. I feel like you just looked up at the Smith jersey and saw 28, and you're like 28. Oh, at least he didn't uh, go 94. Wanya, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> what do you got? 20. Even 20, 20 on the button, 20. man. Nothing wrong with a 20 goal season. Let's put something on no, this. No, no, not at all. That's like paying 30 grand a goal, which, you know, with Lucic, we're paying 7 million for zero. I don't have enough Sick. bets out there right now. Let's put let's put something, not money. Let's put something else on this. Closest to? Sure. Everyone has to say one nice thing about him at Ooh. the end of the year. Winner gets a chase on Oilers jersey. Oh, that's way better than my thing. <laughs> Who's buying that? Does the winner want exactly. that? Exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a good follow up question. Yeah, I'm starting to think though that the new move. The other day, I was at the Oilers game, go Oilers, and I counted 16 McDavid jerseys walking up the aisle. Every single person at the end of the period, every single person in the aisle had a McDavid jersey. Yeah, I think the move is switching to Rando Oilers. We've and, talked about this before, and OG Oilers jerseys. Real yeah. fans get bad Oilers. Yeah. We've talked about this before. Yeah. I have a buddy with a store teeny, and yeah. that. Jersey draws so much attention when he's at the game because who buys a store team? Nobody. Nobody. You win it in a contest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think, and then the OG ones, like I saw a guy the other day rocking an M. Comrie with the guy on the shoulder oh, pulling back school. the stick. I mean, so Paul, Paul would have been, been on the lineup, yeah. right? Like that's an awesome jersey from an awesome era. Well, I probably have a Latestu. That's perfect. And that's awesome. Current Oilers forward, Jujar Kara. Yep. That's the way to do it, man. As much as I love, you know, the cool thing about my McDavid jersey is, Chalmers. No. Do you want to hear why I'm cool? Yes. Oh, you? Yeah. I think that I is know the this, first. But I, yes. That is probably one of the first five Oilers jerseys that had McDavid on it, and I I got it when they won the Lotto, and I got them to put a Captain C on it. I remember you popping that on the draft party, and the guy saying to me like, "I'm sorry, I uh, can't put a C on this. We have an agreement with the NHN." I'm like, "Man, I'm going to say this to you one time and one time only." Give me a McDavid jersey. <laughs> you put a C on that thing. So that's the first one there. You so could, like, why wouldn't they just do it? Like, you could get a C put on your jersey if it's just a Chalmers. I saw a guy with ass eating 69 season something yeah, sick. Shut season. up. But they were like, nope, we're not allowed. Connor McDavid. Nope. Any child. Gary Bettman phoned us directly himself and said we're not. So I will wear that jersey his entire career. I'm not getting another Connor unless someone gives one to me. And if they do, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll tell you, I think getting a random chase on jersey is the move. Or like a number 20, Sean Van Allen. Yes. See, that's what we're talking about. Going back to the 90s. From Kate Breton. Mats Lindgren. Oh, I love I'd love a Mats Lindgren. Lindgren jersey. Nobody bon sees that one has got to be one of the bon better ones. Be, I've seen a Bonsignor jersey. I saw one this year. Fat Dad 69's got a Bonsignor jersey. Yeah, he does. Friend of the nation. Good for him. I'd like to try and do a thing where, you know, like when they do the handgun registry and everyone brings their old guns in and don't get in trouble. Mm. Remember that? Yeah. We should do it with jerseys somehow. We should offer like either it's like a gift certificate to get a new jersey or we give you Oilers Nation gear or some shit. But we got to get all the cool old jerseys out of people's closets because there's been people winning. That's a good idea. People winning contests and raffles and shit like that for weird old jerseys and stuff like that. Like there's somebody out there has a Mark Fane jersey. On the same note, I have a Sean Fleming Eskimos jersey signed that I won. And do you think I have looked at that thing since the day <laughs> I got it? It's taken up space. Well, where did you win that at? The bad thing? Some shit. I don't know. Some of those luncheons back in the day. like the, <laughs> Trying to burn them, but didn't. I've got a team signed FC Edmonton jersey. <laughs> Damn. I don't want any of that garbage. What I want. No, I know. But what I'm saying yeah, is I want there's like got to be Oilers jerseys out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, people have them. They think they're in the backs of their closets. We can and put garbage. them all around the podcast. They're not studio. garbage. Yeah, they're not garbage. They're cool. And old crappy Oilers jerseys are cool. If you're one of 12 listeners right now, go into your closet and find the Oilers crap that you have that you don't think is cool and tweet it at us. It's cool. And if jerseys are hanging on the wall, that's like good for sound absorption. If you're pissed about. It's sure. For sure. That's <laughs> sure. a good call, actually. If you're pissed about spending money on Oilers merch, you might want to take it the other way. Yeah. Be like, you know what I want? Spend it on past Oilers merch. Like, I got a Yakupov jersey. I'm going to rock until the end of time. As you should. I bought it. Of course. It was a 6'4". I thought it was cool. It's it was cool. cool for like a couple days. Mm. 
It's not cool. Now when you wear it to others games, people look at you sad. It happened to me. I wore it to preseason. <laughs> Give it time though. Let it let it uh, mature a little bit and in about 10, 15 years. But, oh yeah. No. But this could be how you it won't. This is uh, how uh, you like fight no. back with the Oilers stupidity is like the stuff that they, like the, the players they tried to sell to us, like Belanger. Mm. Like, like will well, you guys convince Noopsy to get the fucking Justin Schultz jersey? <laughs> Sam. Do you know what or I did? Sam. No, no, it was, it was nope. Yep. And he converted I, to a maroon jersey. Oh, I decided I was going to buy into Reggie Bush when yeah. he was like in college. He broke like, he had like 950 yards in one game. Got with Kim K? Yeah. Yeah, it was fucking insanity. The guy was crazy. It was all purpose yards. It was nuts. But so I decided to like buy signed jerseys and like buy a bunch of stuff and like put them together and they would appreciate. The guy loses his Heisman like four years later. Like it's, it doesn't always work that way, man. He lost his Heisman? Yeah, he took money from a. He's like one of the only people that's actually lost his Heisman. Like OJ they, lost his Heisman. I thought plenty of people. Yeah, like one of the only people. <laughs> OJ killed. I'm just some trying people. to think. I knew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Red, Reggie so, Bush no, took some money he didn't, for Chalmers. for his mum, and they took his <laughs> Heisman. The court away. said he did. And basically, yeah, they were like trying to get it from him, and he's like, "Come get it." Really? Oh yeah. He didn't give it back. No, he, they told him to ship it to him. They don't actually come physically take it from you. They ask you to, they ask you to send it to like, them. No, my husband. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. Uh, if I did it, the Reggie Bush. The I Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard to figure out which jerseys are going to appreciate and be cool. Yakupov. Buddy, telling me. I think you made. I lost all my money when I was like 23, 24, bounced back by 25. Holler at your boy. I'm like, I'm rich again. I want to go buy some Tiger Woods memorabilia, which we'll I surely remember appreciate. all that stuff. Remember, we went to Wayne yep. Sports Cards when we went to the Vietnamese restaurant, and I bought that stupid giant Tiger Woods card autographed. <laughs> I bought it for $200. <laughs> Nouveau riche. You know you do, bag milk. Wayne. What do I even need that? Well, although he is slightly bounced back. And then the day I remember sitting there and watching him do his press conference, and he'd just taken his tie off before he came out to apologize to everybody for being a scuzz bag, but his collar was all janky. I was like, this motherfucker's not coming back. And I went and I took everything down off the walls and put it all in boxes. Right, His mugshot is me watching Oilers games right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. like that really beat down look. That's, That's how I feel. That's the pain. That's the pain. It's, it's Just put it in a box. Go look at it in like 30 years. Give it to my kids because you're not going to have any. Yeah. yeah. Well, that I'll talk to. <laughs> I'm sure they're out there. Papa. No, 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 no. Daddy. No. I went to Ancestry.com. No, you did not, because I haven't. <laughs> There's no way you can connect me to your tree, you little bastard. Huh. I'll tell you what, Chalmers. If things don't get better around here, what do the Oilers look like in two years? I don't know, because I won't be watching. <laughs> no, Son of a what, bitch. Do they, what do they look like? Play I don't along. Know they... We're on a podcast. Eight people are listening now. Yes. Four turned out. So give them my honest Oilers opinion. Yes. My honest Oilers opinion is we're going to be exactly where we were in... Whenever the time was that, like middle nineties. Oh God! Yeah, and we're going to be getting high draft picks again, and Connor McDavid in two years. Connor McDavid is not going to leave before two years, and if it's as sad as that, he won't be here, which is going to suck. I hope to God doesn't get there though. Jay, two years. I can't see the future, and I'm not very creative that way. You can't see the future. Connor McDavid's going to be here. We're going to have three really great lines, and we're going to win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna say in two years we'll be three really uh, great. We'll we'll have a, our window will be open. Gotta have one yeah. bad one. Our Stanley Cup window will be open in two years. And if it's not, how many goals for fire Lu- them all? How many goals for Lucic between now and two years from now? Uh, three. <laughs> you said twenty eight for Chasen this well, year. Well, right now he is outscoring Lucic ten to zero. Lucic has that one. Remember, we were all excited. Game one, he got that big goal. We're like, Lucic is back. Oh, he did score in the... Oh, fuck. But he's not back. Bag milk, where are the oil in 24 months? Uh, I think that a new GM will come in. He's going to have... Here's the way I look at it. New GM, whoever comes in next is going to have a lot of fun because David's already in place. Drysaddle's already locked up. Nuge is locked up. They've got three big pieces there and he's just going to hack away at all the other fucking shit that got brought in. He's going to have a great time. We are going to be in the playoffs, in the hunt, in the mix in 24 months. Book it. Hmm. See, that's way the better. The tragedy than what I said. is that we he, he should be there <laughs> no, no, no. now. Okay? Oh, of course. The tragedy is that we should be there now. We're in year four of Connor McDavid's career. We're talking about fucking lottery picks again. Is bonkers. Oh yeah. What's the saying for Hughes? Lose, lose for Hughes. Lose, lose, lose for Hughes. Lose for Hughes. Genius. Hughes Petroleum's licking their chops <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. of a Hughes <laughs> coming first pick that. overall. Jay, where are the oil in twenty four months? You've already asked me. Oops. And I said that the window will be window open. Will be open. Do they have the same GM? 
No. If they do, well, then the window's shut and McDavid's playing somewhere else. Oh. Wow. How long would you give until you start to put the clock on Connor wanting to be an oiler? Now. Really? Connor is so good now. And he will be tomorrow and for a few more years. But no, like if I'm Connor, I'm I'm mad now. Like fuck. It's four years. He's in his fourth year. They're trading away like all kinds of players around him, his buddies. Like right after Ryan Strom got traded, I'm not saying Ryan Strom's a be all end all. But he But the does team ha- liked him. The, the team, team liked Strom. So him. why the fuck would you trade him? And he's outscoring fucking Cuddles who came in to bolster the offense. Strom has a goal and an assist in five games in New York. And a fight. And a fight. And Cuddles has jack shit. Cuddles. <laughs> That's just great. Uh, all you had to do was identify the identity line sooner and get Strom in the top six, and Strom would have been fine. He would have been fine. They played him two periods with McDavid when he first brought over. Was it first brought over? I know that because Dusty texts me that stat all the time. All the time. <laughs> uh all right, boys, it's the yes. 100th episode, Real Life Podcast. We've got through 99% of podcasts don't make 200 episodes of the ones that do. 100% have more than 12 listeners. I want to start, I want to end this, the best and worst of the first 100 episodes. Things that you're the happiest about in the last three years, things that you're the least happiest about in the last three years, and you're doing the rolling pins with your hands. It's going to take three more minutes, man. Sorry. And so do it to a drum roll? I can't. 100th episode. Yeah, yeah. Best and worst. I'll talk. I'll go first. Of the last hundred episodes since we started doing this, best things Connor McDavid by a landslide. Even though this team is in free fall, this little gem of a human being has put up two scoring championships, title championship seasons. Unbelievable. He has made some fantastic commercials. We've already seen him do short hair Connor, no beard Connor, short haired Connor, bearded Connor, long haired Connor, bearded Connor. Long-haired Connor, no beard Connor. That's four different looks, Chalmers. GQ Connor. GQ Connor. On the bench Connor. 100-point uh, Connor. McTuft Connor and now McFlo. Jumping up and down on the bench when they score in overtime Connor. That's one of my favorites. Casual hole-in-one Connor. Is it in? Of course it's in. Of Connor. course it's in. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever. His dad being prouder of him then than ever before in his life. Mm-hmm. Worst for the first 100 episodes, I am shocked that we are still here talking about a 25th, 26th other team. Mm-hmm. If you told me, here is how his first four years are going to go, please predict how the Oilers do. Never in my wildest, worst dreams would I predict that we are sitting here in 2018 coming to a close, wondering if we're going to write this season off. The Back. minute we drafted Connor McDavid, I was going around the globe and telling everyone how the next 15 years of my life are just going to be so awesome. They still were. Will be. First four are a bit rocky. I know. First, we're four years into this 15 year run of awesomeness. And I'm just, the moment, not feeling it. The back half will be the best part. That's what she said. Back half is always the best part. And I still believe in it. Bag mail. Oh, sorry. Is that a best? You guys worst? make me want to believe in My it. My best of the week? No, best of the first 100 episodes. Oh. Like a little bit more macro. What are you yeah, really? Yeah, oh, sorry. I was just going off. No, of, no, no, uh, no. Off a thing there. Um, okay. Well, obviously, the Connor is the most obvious one. Uh, I am very excited that we have. You know, the crown jewel of NHL arenas. I think it's very cool that it lives and resides in Edmonton now and all eyes are on us. I just wish the product that's being played in the building was better. But I love it all. Mm -hmm. Egg milk? Uh, I'm not feeling very good about the Oilers right now, so I'm going to go my best of is right now, Wanya. If you go to longneckmerch.com. I know where you're going with and this. You buy this is your t-shirt. best thing of the last hundred episodes. You buy a t-shirt. I was trying to make it relevant. You get two, and I repeat, two free daddy long neck chains coming right at you with that fresh t-shirt. You've had a sad three years, man. It's been tough. Cyber Monday. Thanks to uh, Gregor and Struds for leaving and let me in. Worst? Worst <laughs> of the last hundred? Uh, Peter Shirley's still employed. Ah, That's fantastic. Yeah, that was going to be mine as well. We got to start hyping Yale. Of course, we got to hype Yale. You we know, we're get, just a community college in the area. We got to get. Somebody took a business yeah. class. We got to get more pro Yale if we're going to be anti Chia. Yeah, no more Harvard. <laughs> let's no. just start pro- promoting Yale. Let's just put up photos of Yale. Let's put up the Yale uh, 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 logo. What's it called? Start the singing their fight song at the start of every podcast. <laughs> it will drive Chia nuts. Except his head is so up there, <laughs> he doesn't know what anybody else is doing or what he's doing. Well, boys. Oh, Chalmers, my God in heaven, I apologize. 
Well, that's okay. I there mean, is I just, one thing I, I want to bring up after came, this before you wrap it up. I just came to this, best obviously, yeah, very late. The best is just having fun with you guys and talking about shit. And I know a lot more about Oilers than I would if I didn't come and do this. You know, it keeps it keeps me relevant. It keeps me wanting to um, watch the game, I mean. Keeps the Oilers relevant to me and makes it easier for me to bet on them. Um, the worst about the last 100 podcasts is that I was only on like seven of them <laughs> or eight of them but one more thing best going is, is this great cup festivities this week the Yale fight song keep going Charles. okay <laughs> the city of Edmonton really proved that it's great at what they do when they throw parties and the great cup festivities were amazing me and my family took them in this weekend that section on Jasper Ave that was blocked off was a ton of fun my kids loved it my worst of that is the actual game yeah was not that good. No. The ice on the field made it bad and, you know. Halftime whatever. show was great. It's CFL football. She has some bangers, eh? Like six in a row. I didn't know who that girl was. Man, she's But then great. when she started singing songs, I was like, oh, I know that one. Yeah. Oh, I know that one too. Yeah. It's the best. That great is Great halftime show. I also loved, Wanya, I think you were tweeting about it. Like the old cranky fucks that were just like, oh, they just got to get Bachman Turner Overdrive. Oh my God. Like yeah. Randy you, Bachman's not 54, good enough 40? anymore. Yeah, they stepped it up. Well, they didn't Bieber do 100? Yeah, Bieber's there. He kept the 100? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think Edmonton did a phenomenal job for the Great Cup, mm-hmm. and they got a lot of praise for it. So, you want, yeah, that's an awesome best of the week. There's some civic pride there. Like we can, our, our city's not letting us down. It's just our team. No, it was electric around there. It was great. You want to close, Jay? I wanted to bring this up. It's, it's totally uh, not off topic, but uh, on topic, but maybe brought at the wrong time. <laughs> uh, our boy, Yul Pearson. One of our Swedish uh, visitors it writes for the Vax Joe Lakers, which I butchered the name. Uh, but our boy, Joel Pearson, is lighting up the SHL, and he says it was it's going to be a very good signing for the Oilers. So, prospect talk. I just wanted, I just, I just wanted to. What a, prospect what a weird thing to close <laughs> I guess, Well, I just like to say the time cutting. was wrong. I wanted to bring it up earlier. You couldn't put good. that in the icebox till next gonna, week. Gonna, it was going to be. We're the, ending with 100 it was episodes. Fresh, and it was going to be my back. best of the week until you maybe talk about the history of this fucking tire fire podcast.